diabetes mellitus. So you can see at the top left hand corner you've got normal cellular metabolism. So we've got the cell, insulin and glucose. So glucose is floating around in your bloodstream and you want it to get across the cellular membrane into the cell to produce energy. Insulin is a hormone that facilitates this. So insulin is a key to open the door for glucose so that glucose can travel from the blood into the cell. Diabetes mellitus, so we're going to look at two types here. So type 1 is where there's no insulin. So absolutely no insulin, no key, no door is opening. Glucose therefore is staying in the bloodstream and the cell is not producing energy. So there's no insulin because the beta cells in the pancreas they can't make insulin. So their beta cells have been damaged um, often by an autoimmune disease, uh, autoimmune response, and so no longer make insulin. Where type 2 diabetes is where there's often insulin made, but it's not enough. The insulin that is made is defective, so it's dodgy, it doesn't work properly, or the cell itself is resistant to the insulin that's being made. So again we've got glucose in the bloodstream and the cell isn't producing energy. So as this glucose isn't passing across into the cell it accumulates in the bloodstream. So another word for that is hyperglycemia. Hyper, high, glyc, glucose, emia in blood. Hyperglycemia. We also say it's a high BSL, high blood sugar level. What are some complications around this? Why is having glucose in the bloodstream so bad? One of the things that happens is that glucose can build up in the lens of the eye, so at the front, and it becomes cloudy. So patients can experience issues with blurred vision. Another complication that can happen is there's all this, so the, your bloodstream has all this glucose in it, so your body wants to dilute it. So your body starts pulling fluid to dilute this glucose and electrolytes. It's a osmotic diuresis is a fancy way of saying it. So we're pulling all this fluid, we're sending it to our filters, which are our kidneys. Kidneys filter the blood and produce urine. So we're pulling all this fluid, we're making our kidneys work over time, which means we're going to be peeing more, which results in a high urine output. Fancy pants way of saying that is polyuria. The other thing, we're, if we're diluting it, we're getting rid of it, we're peeing it out, so there's going to be glucose in our urine. Now, one thing to think about is glucose is really yummy for bacteria. It's really yummy. So diabetics with high blood sugar level, uh, increased risk of thrush and other genital conditions. So you've got other issues around, um, other issues like urinary tract infections because your urine's full of cake for the bacteria. Yummy, yummy. If we're peeing lots, our body's going to want to make to correct that imbalance, so it's going to make us really thirsty. So a fancy way of saying high thirst is polydipsia. Another thing that happens with hyperglycemia is there's no glucose in the cell. Well, there's not enough glucose in the cell. So glucose is one of our main sources of energy, energy production. So you're going to feel like crap, you're going to be fatigued, you're going to be tired, you're going to be exercise intolerant. An emergency response that your body activates in response to this no glucose in the cell is the liver releases stored glucose. But with no functioning insulin, this stored glucose that is released increases our blood sugar level and stays there, stays in the blood. So then we go back up. There's no glucose in the cell still. So our emergency response is activated, our liver releases more glucose, increasing our BSL, but there is no functioning insulin. So you can see how that cycle can just go on and on and on and on. So if we've got no glucose in the cell, no energy being produced, our body starts using alternate fuel sources. So we start breaking down fat and muscle, which result in, and you can see it in patients, they start losing lots of weight even though they're eating lots, and they start having muscle wasting. So in response to this, our body does make us want to eat more. So this fancy word of polyphagia. So our body wants to eat more and more and more because we're using all our fuel.
Good. Another, so acute complications of hyperglycemia is your DKA, which I'll go through in another video. Um, HHNS and low blood sugar level. Once we start treating high BSL, we're at risk of a low BSL. Long-term complications of diabetes. So you've got to think glucose is big, fat, sticky, and annoying. So it's going to go into our blood vessels. If glucose in our blood, it's going to go into our blood vessels. Our little baby blood vessels in our kidneys, they're going to get blocked. They're going to get killed off because glucose is big, fat, sticky, and annoying. So we're going to kill off our little blood vessels. It's going to get blocked. What happens to the rest of the tissue given that our blood carries all the nutrients, oxygen, carries away waste products? Now there's no blood getting to that area, no blood vessel because it's blocked. So that we get tissue death. The same thing happens at the back of our eye and our retina. So glucose, big, fat, sticky, annoying, gets stuck in our retina. Therefore, you have more visual disturbances. And with it, if our kidneys are involved, then we have renal impairment and renal disease. The other thing that can happen is the tiny little blood vessels that are feeding our nerves get blocked and damaged, resulting in nerve death. So the blood vessels that give our nerves all its oxygen and nutrients die. So it no longer has that. So it kills it. It dies. So patients present with numbness, tingling, burning to hands and feet. So this neuropathic pain that they're feeling. The other thing can happen once the nerves completely die off is they have no feeling. They have no sensation. I once had a patient who um, had sat so close to a, a heater that his foot started to burn and he basically burnt off most of his foot because he was on fire, he couldn't feel it because he had this, this nerve damage secondary to his diabetes. The other thing, glucose is big, fat, sticky and annoying in our big blood vessels as well. So it's going to cause increased risk of coronary artery disease, peripheral vascular disease, increasing risks of stroke, and those sorts of things. So I hope that this has helped you to understand a little bit about the complexity that is diabetes mellitus. Um, the popular kid on the block seems to be um, up and up. Uh, if you have any questions or um, comments, please feel free to leave them below, and happy studying.